Hello and welcome to the video. Apologies for the voice, just recovering from a throat infection. It's that wonderful thing at the start of the year when my wife goes back to school. She's a primary school teacher. Uh, we as a family get exposed to a whole new raft of bugs. So hopefully you can put up with the voice. I've waited until it's this good before making a video. Now this video is about quad. Uh, this is the Armatan Beaver. I did a video about it a while ago. This is an absolutely spectacular piece of kit. However, this is something that I find that I need a lot. Uh, this little thing here, this is a little prop nut spanner. And the idea with this is that it allows you at the field to kind of make sure that your prop nuts are done up. Um, I get through a lot of these. Um, just because I seem to always be lending them out to people or uh, putting them down somewhere and forgetting about them. So I have developed lots of different designs of these things and shared them on places like Thingiverse to do with 3D printing. However, now I have the Sculptfun S10 laser. I can cut them out of acrylic. So that's what this video is all about. I'm still learning with the S10, still playing with Lightburn, but as I've been playing and making these things, I thought, let me show you how it all works. Now, before we get into that and show you the process, I'll put time codes down below. We'll create the design in Lightburn, and then we'll actually show you how to cut the thing. Uh, don't forget to wear your fantastic goggles. Um, safety first with lasers, particularly these more powerful hobby grade lasers can do some very serious damage to your eyes. So whenever you're going to run the laser, make sure that you're wearing the goggles and don't leave it running unattended. So with all that said, let's jump onto Lightburn and I'll show you how I designed the piece and put all these different bits together so it was ready to cut. So let me recreate this job that I've actually used to cut the piece and show you how easy it is to create something like this, even with things like engravings. A couple of things to note, we have three different layers. The black is the line, which is actually the cut. The blue is an engraving and so is the red. So we, we have a pretty standard setup here. If I just uh, get it to play, we turn it down just a smidgen. You'll see it's going to do the engraving of the pill first. Then it's going to do the engraving of the different sizes. Then it's going to cut out all of the different pieces. And hopefully we're going to end up with something that looks like the piece at the beginning. So let's go through this. The order in which these things are cut by the laser is set by the order that they're in the layers. So let's start with a brand new piece. Here we go. So there we are. So the first thing we'll do is we'll draw a rectangle, which is going to go around everything. Now, the biggest opening is going to be for a 10 millimeter bolt. So we want a little bit each side of that. So maybe two millimeters. So that's going to be 14. So let's click on the rectangle tool, draw a rectangle and type in here the size that we want. We want it 50 millimeters long and we'll have it 14 millimeters high because if we hit enter and we hit escape a couple of times, then that should end up with a rectangle that we're interested in. Let's zoom in. Now, if we click on the rectangle, uh, we can move it so it is over. The middle of it is over that line. Hopefully you can see that on the video. We're going to use that as our kind of line to snap everything, to keep everything relatively central. Quick and easy tip. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some rounded ends to this. So we're gonna click on the circle tool. I'm gonna to draw a circle and we're gonna make it 14 high and 14 wide. It's doing that because it's locking the aspect ratio and that's fine. So we'll exit out of that. We'll click on the circle and drag it so it snaps to the end. Now we're gonna right click on that and we'll say duplicate and we'll drag the other one to the other end and it'll snap into position. So the next thing we need to do then is to connect the pieces together so that it becomes an outline rather than this kind of weird sketch here. So if I click on the circle, hold the shift key and click on the rectangle, then these extra little tools here appear. One of which is called Boolean union of two shapes. So we'll click on that and there we go, that's done it. And then if we click on that new shape we've just created, hold the shift key and click on the circle, we can do the same thing. And now we have our outline. Now for the cutouts, we luckily 
have things like a regular polygon. So we can draw this out and we can make the height, which is the top to bottom, to be 10 millimeters. And that's going to be perfect for a 10 millimeter bolt when we've cut it. I'm going to hit enter, escape a few times so that we have the shape and we'll drag it into position and we're going to snap it again to that middle line. Now we're going to duplicate that and we'll move it around. This time we'll make this one eight and hit enter. There we go. As the eight one, we'll put that um, towards the end. We'll just slide that over there because these larger ones want to be towards the end of the piece for the extra leverage. We'll do a couple more. We'll duplicate that again and we'll slide it into uh, nearly the middle and we'll take that to be a six and we'll hit enter. There we go. We're nearly there. We'll duplicate that one more time, slide it over here. And this time we're going to make it as a three and we'll kind of make it as an open-ended spanner piece. So let's zoom in on here. So if I move it so that it's still in the middle, but it kind of joins up with the end. Now what I can do is try and get rid of that piece and that piece so that we get that cut out. So we're going to have to try each of these to find which one works. Let's try Boolean subtract. Control Z, that didn't quite work. Let's click it the other way around. So let's click on the main shape first, hold the control key, click on the little uh, shape and do again. That's better, there we go. So now we're starting to look like something. Now we need a hole for a lanyard or a key ring or something. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to then create a little circle and we'll just do that. Um, three or four millimeters is gonna be fine. Four mil looks good to me. That's what it snapped to. So what we'll do is we will just drag that into position so that can be cut. Last thing I want on here, of course, is I want my logo. So we'll import an image. Do the old pill, that's way too big. So first of all, let's scale it down. Kind of drag it into position. Still needs to be a lot smaller than that. There we go. Pop it where it's gonna work. Still smaller will be good. Let's see there. And what we're gonna do is right click on that image and say trace. Adjust the slider so it traces it quite well. Say okay. And then what we're going to do is going to select the image in the layers and just delete it. Yep. And if we escape out of that a couple of times, there we are. We have it ready to cut. Now, of course, this all needs to be selected. So what I'll do is I'll select that piece. Let's put that on its own layer. Let's call it blue. We're going to make this as um, a fill. And we're going to set the power to be the power that's needed for an engraving. We're going to set the outline to be a cut. We can put that on its own layer if we really wanted to. That's gonna be a line again. And then we're also going to put these three other pieces along. I'm just holding the control key while I click them all. And we'll stick them on another layer and we'll make that line two. Now the order it's gonna do it is the order that I've created these in. Now. We need to set the power for the individual cuttings of the pieces. Now I've got to set the power levels here for the different pieces. And it's telling me that for something like black acrylic, then it needs to be 15 and 40 for engraving and two and 100. So 15 and 40 and two and 100. So 15 and 40 is going to be fine for the engraving, but it needs to be something like two and 100 we'll click okay and again we'll say two and 100 okay now if we will have a look at that and get it to play there's the engraving there's the outside line and there's the inside bits i probably want the inside bits done first because once the outline is done the piece is loose so let's just change that let's just move that final line up one level run it again 
So we want the engraving, then the cutting of the individual openings, and then to cut the whole piece out of the piece of acrylic. That looks really good. Now, I did have a couple of problems with this in terms of the power for the cutting. The engraving and everything else worked out fine. In fact, I did some extra things. And what I did is while Caesar 01 is selected, we can also add some legends here for the different pieces. So if I set the height to be something like I know, four millimeters and said, let's say it's 10. If I move that into position, resize it slightly and just pop it next to it. It's going to be very small, but we can, while it's selected, we can put that on the engraving line by pressing blue. And then we can put the other numbers on. So that's the six. And then over here is going to be the eight. And that should hopefully engrave those numbers by the side as well. If we wanted to, let's be complete about this. Let's pop another one here for the three mil. Escape, escape. And let's just push that by the side of it. So there we are. Let's just double check that's going to work. Play. So the engravings go first. Excellent. Then the cutting out of the individual pieces and then the cutting out of the whole bit. That looks fab. Now, the only thing I found was the cutting is tricky because the recommended settings are a little bit low. It doesn't quite do it. So I would actually do a couple of things here. I'd drop it down to one millimeter per second, keep the power 100%, but I would double the number of passes and I would do that for both of them, one millimeter per second is what I need here, even with their assist, a couple of passes is definitely gonna make sure that it's cut out. So with that done, let's go and cut it and show you how that piece works. So here are the actual laser, this is a pretty normal setup for the S10. First thing of course, is that you need to use the focus tool to set the height of the laser above the piece so that it's going to be focused perfectly for the job you're about to run. Once you have it all set up and the thumb screws are tight, then move the head into the front left position, which is going to be the zero position. I've turned on air assist here just because I think air assist seems to work better, particularly with things like plastic, it helps stop it melting and also things like the wood from smoke from interfering. And then I have powered everything up and then use the frame command within Lightburn to make sure that I had the material in the right place. And then I hit cut and away it goes. So there you have it, little prop tool that I designed and cut from acrylic using Lightburn and the Sculpt Fun S10. Links to those two things down below. Now, the only thing that I've learned from this uh, is that I would recommend whenever you're using a new material, because this is my first kind of explorations with acrylic, is that you do some cutting tests. Uh, set up a little job in Lightburn where you have a little short length that you're going to cut as a line and set up different power levels uh, just to make sure that it's gonna pop through and cut it cleanly. I didn't, and I wasted a little bit of material doing that. So my big lesson and takeaway from this is whenever you're using a new material, do a cutting test first. If you actually have the cut come just past the edge of the material, you'll also be able to see exactly how far down the laser had made it with that particular go, which will help you dial it in. So if you have any questions on this stuff, then do pop it down below if there's anything particular you want to see. The laser is very capable of not only engraving, but also cutting quite thick material as well. It's just a case of increasing the number of passes. The fact that the air assist is there definitely makes a big difference, I found, on things like wood and seems to keep the edges of even stuff like acrylic in good shape, even when you're cutting through it. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.